Hey guys, welcome back to Lab Cyber. I hope you're doing well wherever you are. And today's video marks the very first in a new series I'm creating called Cyber Attacks, where I'll basically take one kind of cyber attack, discuss it at length, I'll tell you how it's executed, but most importantly, how you can prevent yourself from falling victim to such an attack. And today's video, we're gonna cover a particularly nasty attack known as the SIM swap attack. So what exactly is this attack and how is it executed? Well, it basically involves your phone number and your SIM card. See, the SIM card in your phone is very, very important as I'm sure you are aware. It is your SIM card that provides the number for your mobile device to use, but it's also your SIM card that tells what carrier your phone is supposed to connect to. So what happens in a SIM swap attack is that a hacker will attempt to get your SIM card services by simply calling your carrier and saying that, hey, I lost my phone, I lost my SIM card, can you transfer my phone number over to this new SIM card that I have? That's basically what the uh, SIM swap attack is. So how is it executed? Well, the first thing you need to know is that this kind of attack is a very personal attack. In order for it to be successful, the hacker needs to know a lot of information about you. They might need to know things like your favorite sports team, where you were born, where you live, things like that. And they can gather information like this specifically from social media. If you're the type of person who shares a lot of stuff about yourself on social media, the hacker will be able to gain all that information about you. Now, when you created your account with your career provider, you probably as a security measure had to provide some security questions that you would need to answer to verify that you are who you claim to be. So what the hacker needs to do here is that they'll first of all gather as much information as they can about you. Then they will call your service provider and say, hey, I'm Alex, I lost my phone. Can you transfer my phone number over to my new SIM card? And then the operator will say, okay, can you answer the following security questions? Uh, what's your dog's name? Where were you born? And if the hacker already knows all that about me, guess what? They will simply answer the questions correctly. And then the request to transfer the phone number will then be executed. That's basically how it works. So you might be thinking, come on, it can be that easy. Will people fall for that? Well, yes. And there is actually a story here of how uh, a journalist, his name is Matthew Miller, he fell victim to this attack. Basically, the hacker was able to gain access to his uh, SIM card and he, they were able to gain access to his Google account and his Twitter account as well. Now, how is that possible? Well, keep in mind that whenever you try to create an account on certain websites like PayPal, Twitter, you will be asked to provide a phone number, right? Once you provide the number, the system will send a code to your number. You then have to provide that number, that, I'm sorry, that code uh, in order to create your account. But likewise, if you're trying to reset your password and you've used your phone number as a second factor authentication, once the hacker has access to your phone number, all they will need to, to do is to go to your Gmail account or your Twitter account, click on, uh, forgot the password link, and then the system will send the code to the phone number, which they now possess. And as such, they'll be able to provide the code, gain access to your Twitter account or your Gmail account and simply reset the passwords. That's basically what happened here. So a SIM swap attack can be very, very devastating. But what's frightening here is that Google and Twitter were unable to help him. He actually had to create a new Twitter account and the hacker deleted all his Gmail, his Google emails and caused a lot of havoc and Google were unable to help him, which is really, really scary. So the warning here is that you never should rely on companies to protect you uh, if something bad happens. They even charged his bank account uh, with $25,000, but thankfully his bank was a lot more helpful. They were able to retrieve the money back for him. I'll provide the link in the description box below if you want to read more about this story. It's really, really scary. But basically, what are the signs that you've been attacked by a SIM swap uh, cyber attack, right? What are the symptoms? The first thing you need to know is that basically your phone will lose service. You might realize that you can no longer make phone calls and you can't receive text messages, text messages, you can't send text messages. Basically, you will see no service on your phone. Now, obviously, I don't want you to become all paranoid if you do see something like that because yes, it can happen that sometimes you may be in a location where there's no service, but that is really the first sign. But the second sign is that very often 
when such a task has been executed, once the request to transfer the phone number over to another SIM card has been executed, uh, your carrier will, will send a text message to your phone number saying, your request to transfer your phone number to a new SIM card has been accepted or has been executed. So you will get a notification. And that's exactly what happened uh, with him, I believe. He, he, I believe he got the uh, message, or maybe it was someone else, I don't quite remember. But they got the message that, hey, your request to transfer your phone number has been accepted. And that's when they knew that, okay, uh, I've been attacked by a SIM swap. Uh, attack. So those are two. Those are the usual two uh, signs that you, you've been you've been attacked this way. But what can you do if you've been attacked? Well, the very first thing to do is to call your bank. All right, call your bank. Tell them that hey, you've fallen victim to a sim swap attack, and let them freeze your accounts until you've been able to resolve the issue. That's the very first uh, people you should call. You can call your carrier provider and tell them that hey, look, I never requested to have my sim card or my phone number transferred. Uh, but from what I can tell, th there isn't much they, that they can do because from my understanding is that most of these companies, once the request to transfer a SIM card has been executed, it can be canceled. That's my understanding. But maybe your own carrier might have a different uh, policy. I don't know. But you also want to go to your most important accounts on the internet, especially your email accounts. If you can change the password, change the password. But most importantly, for accounts where you've used your phone, number as a second factor authentication, please ensure that you disable that, remove your phone as a second factor authentication. And in fact, for second factor authentication moving forward, you should never use your phone, use uh, other methods. I'll probably discuss this in another video. But how can you now prevent yourself from falling victim to such an attack? Well, the first thing you want to do is you can call your carrier providers today, or you can simply go to their website and see if they have any security measures in place that you can take advantage of to protect yourself from such an attack. What people usually do is that they will provide a PIN number. So basically, in addition to answering security questions, you will have to provide that PIN number before such a task can be executed. Now, a PIN number is something that a hacker would most likely not know unless you stupidly decided to share your PIN number on social media, but I'm sure you would never ever do that. So providing a PIN number is one way to go. But you also want to make sure that even with your security uh, questions, the answers that you provide for those questions, make sure those answers aren't real. For example, what's your favorite sports team? Provide a random answer like toothbrush, all right? But of course, you want to make sure that these are answers that you can actually remember. So that's kind of like the trick there. You want to provide fake answers, but you need to ensure that you can remember uh, what those fake answers are. Maybe you can think of a movie or something to help your memory in such a situation when you're providing answers to such uh, questions. But another thing you can do to prevent yourself from falling victim to a same swap attack is to basically never use your phone number as a second factor authentication. Again, I'll talk about this probably in another video. But today, I want you to call your, your career providers or go to the website and see if you can provide a PIN number that you will need to add or provide when you want to request for a SIM swap. That would really go a long way to preventing you from falling victim to such an attack. So that's it for today's video covering the very first type of cyber attack, which was the SIM swap attack. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to like the video, share the video with anyone whom you feel might benefit from it. And of course, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. It's a brand new channel. But as you can see right now, I'm uploading lots of videos because I'm really passionate about cybersecurity and I have a lot of information to share uh, with you guys. So that's it. Thank you so much. If you have any questions or comments, of course, put them in the comment section below. Thank you so much. And I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.